Hi Dave, Scotland for 3D Artist and welcome to another tutorial. Today we're going to take a look at some rigging and specifically we're going to have a look at some very basic rigging and we're going to rig this character without any bones or without any IK. So it's basically a forward kinematic or FK system and that will become apparent as we move forward in this process. I've specifically designed this character to go with this very basic rigging process. So please forgive the lack of detail, but I think he's uh, he's going to really suit the job and it's great for a beginner or someone starting out to have a look at how rigging can be very simple and it does not need to be extremely complex. In a future publication of 3D Artist, I'm going to be taking this same character with the rig and I'm going to show you how to do a very basic 3D walk cycle. So let's get started. The first thing you should always do in any 3D process or in any creative process is to check your resources and make sure you thoroughly understand what you've got to work with. So just to maximize the screen real estate here, I'm going to work in full screen mode here. And I've got a very simple character and you will notice straight away what I've actually done is modeled this character with rigging in mind. And that just basically means that take for instance you've got this joint here is a cylinder because this particular joint, your knee joint, only rotates on the one axis, whereas you've got the hip joint, which is a, more of a ball joint. So I've actually modeled a ball into the actual model. And I've tried to maintain that throughout the whole model to make this process a lot easier to both follow and understand. So that's why a lot of the decisions were made when, when modeling this particular character. So with any rigging process, the first thing you need to do is really prepare your assets and make sure everything's in place before you start rigging. So let's have a look at what we've got here. Just go into a wireframe for a second. And you'll see that I have gone ahead and grouped all of the assets that are specific to certain parts of the anatomy. So all of these objects that make up this upper arm, including this piston array and the bald socket for the shoulder and these, these sections here, have all been turned into a single editable poly. So I'd already done my UVW mapping and materials and textures and things like that. And then I was able to turn these into one single editable poly. But if you don't want to do that, basically you could turn all of these into a group using the group up the top and that way they stay as separate editable polys. But the goal here is to keep all of the anatomy separate so that you have the ability to isolate just certain sections and get them to move independently with all its subsections moving with it. So I've got my forearm there. You can see here I've got a, a hand. I've already got some linking and I'll explain that shortly on the fingers. And upper torso. And I've also got a lower torso. And the lower torso comes down to a large sphere that goes inside the pelvis there, as you can see there. And then I've got this pelvis outer shell, which is going to serve as our pelvis or hip rotation sort of area. I've got upper legs lower legs and then down on the feet you can see that I've actually connected everything including the ball socket for the foot and then I've got this section at the front to use as some toe rotation for when we want to do some animation and then I've got the head up here and I've also got a neck object as well and the neck object is going to make it a lot easier to position the head by the animator now this red box at the top is basically for switching mesh smooth on and off for the whole object or the whole robot. So if you switch that off, basically the whole mesh has an instanced mesh smooth. You'll notice that everything has this mesh smooth and it's all controlled by this red box up here, which is basically your mesh smooth controls. Also note that in the, in the layer manager, which we can access up here we, under manage layers, I've broken it, uh, some layers out. I've got a mesh all and I've named everything and you'll notice that I've named them quite thoroughly with left and right naming and I've put an M in front of it, basically short for uh, mesh and that way at a glance I'll know whether an object is uh, a mesh object or a rig object 
rig objects, I'll put an R in front of them. So it's looking pretty good. We're probably okay to move forward and to start to rig the character. Everything is set up the way we need it and we've grouped everything into their relative anatomical sub objects. So the first thing we like to do is to start creating dummy objects. And the reason why we use dummy objects instead of rigging the mesh itself is by creating dummy objects, I'm then able to go back and manipulate the mesh and change the mesh and it's not going to impact on the rig at all. So nine times out of 10, you will use a set of dummy objects and spline objects to rig your characters without touching the mesh. We simply just link the mesh uh, to the dummy objects. But in this instance, I'm actually going to use a combination. I'm going to use some dummy objects. I'm going to use some controllers. And I'm also going to use some of the mesh objects, especially for the fingers, just to make life a little bit easier and to show you that you can actually use mesh objects uh, to rig your character, the actual mesh themselves. So the first thing I like to do is work in a top view. And the reason I work in a top view is when you create something in the top view, it inherits the world space of 3D Studio Max. And uh, if you don't understand that, I'm not going to go into it in too much detail, but it has to do with native pivot points of an object. And it's affected by which, which viewport you actually create the object in. So the top view is going to inherit the world space of 3D Studio Max, and that just makes life a bit easier. If we come over to our creation tab and then go into our helpers, I'm going to create a dummy. I'm just going to swap to wireframe mode. And what I'm going to do is create a series of dummies. I'm just going to create one for the shoulder, I'll create one for the elbow, and one for the wrist. And I'm not too concerned with how they line up at the moment. I'm going to position these shortly. Now you'll notice if I come to a front view that they're down on the ground. Just select all three of them and roughly move them up. And that's looking pretty good. And we'll just leave them there for now. We're going to fine tune those shortly. I'm also going to create a dummy for the hips, the knees and the feet. So I'm going to do that in the top view as well. So I might just create them down here. Go to a front view now and just roughly bring them up and line them up. And that's looking pretty good. I think that one there could be a, bit, a little bit bigger. It just makes it a little easier to grab your dummies in the viewport if they're outside of the mesh. So that's working pretty well. Just go to a left view now and get those to be in line with their relative joints. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Now what I'm gonna do is line up these dummy objects as best I can with the actual pivot points of the geometry. Now, it's very important that we get these pivot points right. If, the, if they're not in the right place, then they absolutely will not rotate correctly and the rig just won't work. So it's really important that we get this right. What I'm gonna do is click on the dummy and I know that this, this ball joint is correctly positioned. So all I have to do is line it up with the center of the ball. So I'm zooming right in. And this is, I'm in a front view now, and you, you do have to be quite detailed. That's looking pretty good. And now I'm just going to, this is in a front view, notice up here. So now I'm just going to go to a left view, which is a hotkey L, and I'm going to do the same thing and zoom right in there and make sure it's lined up in the front to back access as well. And once you have done this in the front and left view, then it should be perfectly lined up. You won't need to use the top view because we're doing the back to front line up in the left view. And while we're here, we'll jump into the knee. Same again. 
Now, if you've ever used Max before, you may be wondering why I'm not using the Align tool. When I create, turn these objects into an editable poly, if you highlight this leg, for instance, have a look where the gizmo is, and that is the pivot point of the leg. So, unfortunately, the pivot point of each object is not in the middle of the joint. So, this is really the only way that we can do this operation. So, what I'm trying to do here is, and it's a little easier to line this up in the front view first. And once again, I know that this little cross here is exactly where the dummy needs to be. And as I said before, you must be accurate at this point, otherwise you will never be able to animate the character correctly. It will move in a very bizarre manner. So that's our dummies for our ankle, knee and hips. And what I'm going to show you now, in fact, I'm just going to pause the video. I'm going to go ahead and create the rest of or line up the rest of the dummies. And then I'm going to show you how we get these working on the other side here. Okay, so I've got my dummies lined up perfectly with my anatomy now. And what I want to do is do the other side as well, or bring these dummies on both sides of the character. So I'm going to grab all of the arm dummies, and then I'm going to use the mirror key. Now I'm going to make sure that I'm in view mode and I'm in a perfect front view. And then I'm just going to click on mirror. And what we want to do is make sure X is fine for the axes, but we want to make sure copy is ticked. And also make sure the IK limits is actually ticked as well. Just go OK and then drag these across. And what we're trying to do is line these up. If I swap now to local mode, just go to pivot point center. You'll notice that only one pivot point is visible here. But if I go up into my customize preferences and just go to gizmos, I can tick allow multiple gizmos. And that allows me to actually line up my gizmos. Now we don't need to move it up and down. We just need to line it up in the center. Which is this one right here. And we can check that with the hand as well. Slide in there. And you can see that it's right on the money. All good. So now I use the same method for the legs down here. Grab all three. Use my mirror. It's remembered the copy. You can also use the offset here. And the problem here is that you sort of need to know the distance that these objects are off the center line in order to put a hard and fast figure in there, but you can roughly line it up. Just go okay, and then just move in here. I've found that the sphere down the bottom is pretty easy to, to line it up. And same again, we don't need to move up and down or backwards and forwards. We just need to move it in and out. That looks good. Okay, so now I have my dummy objects on my arms and on my legs. I just need to do some controllers now. Now these aren't dummy objects, these are actually splines. So I'm just going to go into my spline menu here. And the first one I'm going to create is a circle. I'm just going to go to a top view. And I'm just going to roughly draw a circle in the viewport. Doesn't matter too much about the size because we can change the radius. I'm just going to go to a front view now. And... I'm going to move it up and in fact what I'm going to do is just make sure in a view rotation mode I'm going to make sure that I right click on all of these spinner values down the bottom and what that does is resets the circle I've just drawn to the world center which is down the bottom here because this robot has actually been created at that world center that means that it's perfectly aligned with these with the robot. Now what I'm going to do is slide it up and put it just above the robot's head just like this and then I'm going to just go into my 
modify tab for the circle I'm going to tick enable in viewport which makes it an actual thick spline with actual polygons instead of just a line it makes it a lot easier to see in the viewport but you'll notice here that enable in renderer is going to remain unticked I'll give it a thickness of one should be fine and I'm going to bring the radius out a little bit and then I'm just going to line it up with the head I'll just go to a left view so I can see that in the viewport remember this is just a control object that allows me to click on it to select it to rotate the head later on I'm going to be moving the the pivot point of this down to the correct pivot point location which is down somewhere in the neck here much the same as your head is now that's my head object and what I'm going to do is just name it R underscore head R meaning rig and now what I'm going to do is just go to a front view and I'm going to grab that in fact I might just change the color to make it a little easier to see I'm going to grab that and hold shift and drag down and what I want to do is roughly put it down where the uh, pelvis is and that looks pretty good and I'm going to use the align tool this time I'm going to click and align and I'm going to align, align to this lower you can see this large sphere that's inside here I'm going to click and align that uh, I was very careful to maintain the axis point of that sphere because it's so crucial to get the pelvis area aligned very accurately then uh, it was important to make sure that I knew exactly where that would be so what this one's going to be is a hip rotator so I'll just go hip rotator on that one and then what I'm going to do is in the top view I'm just going to use and create a rectangle I'm just going to go to a top view and this one it's going to be fairly big go to a front view I'm also going to I'm just going to bring that up but I'm also going to align that using the align tool to that same sphere object which is by the way this midriff section is linked to that as well so if I click on that it, and what happens is it it snaps to the exact same position as the previous ring and that means it's perfectly aligned but now I'm just going to slightly bring it down just so that it's easier to grab in a front viewport in fact I might just bring the hips up a little higher probably about there and then I'll bring the torso up and or to be to be sure I'll align it perfectly to that and you can see there that what I'm left with is a large square and I'll change the color of that to a red as well and then I've got a small circle and that's for the hip alignment there so I've got my two controllers this large square is going to be my center of gravity so COG it's a term that you use a lot in animation every character has a center of gravity controller and basically every part of the character comes back to this center of gravity controller and then usually it's connected to a, a large character controller on the ground which we we might as well create that right now I'm just going to grab that uh, hip rotator I'm going to shift and drag it down and as a copy and this one's going to be R let's call it the master master character and go OK and just move to a left view have it so that it just rests perfectly on the bottom like that then I'm just going to play with the radius bring the radius up quite large something like that I'll probably bring it down slightly that, that looks pretty good then I'm just going to go into a left view and this is quite important to understand we need to go into the hierarchy tab and then I'm going to go effect pivot only and this allows me to actually move the pivot point of that object without moving the object and this is very important for rigging and what I'm going to do is move that pivot point to the base of the circle instead of in the center of the circle and remember I'm in a left view here and what that means is that if I've got a ground plane I just have to sit this circle on the ground plane and not below it and then the character will actually be able to walk on that ground plane with actually without going through the ground plane so that's how we affect the pivot without affecting the actual object itself.
So we're looking pretty good. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into a left view here and I'm going to create another circle. Probably something about that big should do us. And then I'm going to move it over. And in fact, I should be able to align it to this toe object here, mainly because I know that I positioned the pivot point of this toe geometry object right in the center of this cylinder here. So what this is going to be is our foot controls that we can just grab this and we can rotate the toes. And it might need to go a little bit bigger just so that it's a bit easier to grab. And that looks pretty good. And we'll make that our standard red color. We'll go to a top view and rotate around slightly just so that I can shift and rotate over just as a copy and go OK. And then I'm going to align that to the to this toe. So now I've got two toe controllers. I've got my ankle controls. I've got my knees, hips. I've got my uh, hip rotators. This is my pelvis control. And now I just need some uh, torso controls or spine controls and a neck control. So I'm going to take this circle again. It's been quite handy for us. And I'm going to shift and drag it up. I'm going to put it about I'm going to put it about there. And this one's going to be called lower torso. And then I'm going to do shift and drag up again. Just put it slightly under the arms of the character. And this one's going to be called upper torso. And I just need to bring the radius of that out so that it's easily grabbed in the viewport. And that's looking pretty good. So I'm just going to make sure that this one's aligned correctly. And it is due to the fact that we aligned this one correctly. And it's looking pretty good. Yep. Last thing to uh, include is the neck controls. So I'm just going to go to a top view and create another dummy in the helpers. That's gonna do it. Just go to a left and move it up. Just go into a wireframe. If you zoom in, you can see that there is like a cylinder. You can see in here, there's a cylinder. Not to be confused with the uh, piston that's on its upper arm. There's this single line that goes around here. Now that cylinder is meant to represent the cylinder that the neck rotates on. So I'm going to make sure that I'm in line with that, which is around about here. That looks pretty good. And then I'm going to go to a front view and try to line this up with the center of that cylinder. And I know that that's it there. It's actually, if I bring up my G for grid, you'll see that it's right on the center black line here. In fact, I could right click on the X axis to make sure that it's perfectly on the X axis. And that's working very nicely. So there's my neck controller. So I could easily rename that R underscore neck. So I now have all of my controllers and dummies created and you might think well we haven't done anything for the hands well the reason for that we have done the hands we've ta we've taken care of the hands with the wrist rotator here but it's the fingers now if i just go to a top view what i've actually done is i've gone ahead i made sure that i maintained the axis for the individual fingers so you can see if i just go into a local mode you'll be able to see the actual rotation of these fingers and each finger joint includes the ball joint that it's connected to there's another one there's one and the hand actually includes all the ball joints for the base knuckles now when we start to link these up this will become a lot more apparent but basically what we're going to do is we're not using dummies or controllers for the fingers we're actually going to use the geometry itself and we're going to link the actual raw geometry and all of the pivot points have already been taken care of but if this was your character you would have to go through 
and make sure by using the hierarchy effect pivot only button and you would reposition the pivot points for each of the joints so that they represented the knuckle positions for each finger. So we're looking pretty good. It's time now to start linking the character together, which is really when the rig starts to come together. Okay, so here's our character and you'll notice there's one or two changes from where we left off. I've added some knee controllers. They're just circles added exactly the same way as the feet. Now it's important to note that I have actually changed some pivot point locations for some of these controllers in the center. When we created the center of gravity and the hip rotators, we aligned them to this sphere that's in the center of our character here. And that is the lower torso sphere. And if I rotate it, you'll see that it rotates. it. Whoop, grab the correct object. In fact, I just need to go into my layer manager and just unfreeze my mesh so I can see what I'm doing. If I rotate that, that sphere, it's joined to the torso. And this here is the torso controls, the lower torso controls. Now, notice where the pivot point is for this torso control here. What I actually did is went into my hierarchy tab, selected effect pivot only, just jump into a front view here, and I dragged the pivot point down and lined it up in a wireframe mode. I just lined it up with the center of this sphere that's inside the pelvis here. And that means that when I connect this pelvis object, this lower torso object to this controller here, it will rotate from the correct position. You'll notice that I select this, if I was to rotate it, it's going to rotate from down here and not up in the center of the circle. I did the same with the upper torso as well. You'll notice that the upper torso controls have a pivot point that is roughly just above, or sorry, just below this opening in the chest cavity here. And that's the point where I can get the best uh, amount of rotation without the geometry cutting into itself. So there's been a bit of thought that's gone into that. It, it is important to make sure that those pivot points are in the right place. Same too with the head. If you select the head, you'll see now that the head, if we go to a left view, the head rotation point is actually nicely positioned at the base of the head right where the neck and the head meet. And there's this ball object here. And that's actually going to be the rotation point for the head. So the head controller, and then all we do is link the head geometry to the controller. So that's what we're gonna do now. Just go to a top view. And I'm gonna start out with the fingers. And the way this basically works, if I was to grab this hand joint, this uh, wrist joint and move it, nothing is connected to it. If I grab the hand, nothing is connected to it. So the first thing we need to do is, is, is link any geometry to its corresponding controller. And as I've mentioned, we're not gonna to be touching any geometry in the animation process. The only geometry we're gonna be touching are the fingers. So grab your link tool, which is, this is your select and link tool. And I'm gonna grab the hand, click, drag to the dummy. And you'll see now that when I select the dummy and move it, the hand goes with it. If I rotate the dummy, the hand goes with it. And that's exactly what I need. Later on, we're gonna freeze this hand so the animator can't touch it. I'm gonna grab the lower arm, click and drag to the elbow joint. We're gonna take the upper arm, and we're gonna click and drag to the shoulder joint. And you'll see now that if I was to grab that shoulder, the upper arm moves with it, grab the elbow, the lower arm moves with it, but the wrist gets left behind. So now all we do is we take the wrist and link it to the elbow, and we take the elbow and link it to the shoulder. So now if I grab my shoulder, we'll ignore the fingers for now, and rotate the shoulder, the whole arm goes with it. If I rotate the elbow, just the lower arm, and if I rotate the wrist, it's just the hand, which is exactly what we're looking for. Now with the fingers, what we do is we link from the tip back to the base, and the tip is the child of the next one. The middle knuckle is the child of 
the next one or the base knuckle and then the base is the child of the dummy not the hand don't link the base knuckles to the hand because remember we're going to be freezing that hand later on we'll just do the thumb and the base to the dummy so now if we grab the dummy and rotate it the whole hand and the fingers go with it and if i double click on any one of these base joints double click and change to local mode and then make sure i'm in pivot point basically what i can do is curl the fingers in a natural organic curl and it looks like this one's been left behind If I select this and rotate it, it's on its own. So let's go ahead and grab this, link it to that one, grab that one, link it to this one. And then we should be able to double click and curl the fingers so we can see what we're doing. There you go. Do the next one, double click, just to test it. We're gonna test this out thoroughly later on, but just to show you that it was working okay, that's all good. And then when I select the hand, everything moves with it. I select the elbow, everything's moving the way it should be. So I'm going to grab the upper torso and I'm going to click and link it to the torso controller, which is this ring here. So now when I rotate that, the upper torso rotates with it. I'm also going to grab the shoulder and I'm going to link that to that torso ring as well, the upper torso ring, because we want the shoulder to always stay with the torso. Then I'm going to grab the upper torso ring and I'm going to link it to the lower torso ring. I'm also going to take the lower torso geometry and link that to that same lower torso ring. So now that now when I rotate that lower torso, the upper torso goes with it and so does the geometry. I'm going to take that lower torso ring and I'm going to link it to the center of gravity, which is the big square. Then I'm going to take the pelvis geometry and link it to the hip rotators which is this circle here and then I'm going to take the hip rotator and link it to the center of gravity as well and that just means that when I move the center of gravity everything goes with it we haven't done the legs yet but then I can also independently rotate the hips without changing the torso I can now take I'll just go to a front view zoom in a little bit and I'm going to link the upper, the upper leg to the dummy so that when I rotate the dummy, I get the upper leg and I'm going to take the dummy and I'm going to link it to the hip rotator, which is this circle here. So we'll just make sure that that's gone through and it has. I'm going to take my lower leg geometry and link it to the red controller that we created and then I'm going to take the red controller and link that to our dummy. Basically what that means is we can rotate from the hips and then I can rotate from the knees as well. I'm going to take my foot geometry and link it to my ankle and then take my ankle and link it to the red controller and then when I rotate the red controller, the foot goes with it. And now I have independent foot rotation as well. I'm gonna take the toe geometry and I'm gonna link it to the red ring controller. Then I'm gonna take the red ring controller and link it to the dummy in the ankle. So now if I rotate the foot, the toes go with it, but I also have independent rotation on the toes as well. And the last thing I want to do now, I've only done one side of the body, but um, you're going to be able to replicate what I've done on the left hand side of the character to the right hand side. I'm just going to grab the center of gravity and I'm going to link that to the master controller. And that way, when I move the master controller, everything moves with it. But I also have independent center of gravity animation as well. I'm just going to go to a left view, zoom in here a little bit. I want the neck controller to be linked to this top torso ring so that the neck controller goes with it. 
but then I need to link the neck geometry, which is the one with the sphere here, to the dummy. And I want to link the head geometry to the red head controller. Link the red head controller back to the neck controller dummy, which is right here. And if you've done that correctly, you should be able to rotate the neck controller and the head rotates with it, but also have independent head rotation without any neck as well. And then if you rotate the torso, the head will go with it. So we just go to our front view and you can see now that if I grab the center of gravity and move it, everything goes except for those leg and arm that we haven't done yet but everything is connected to it. I can grab my lower torso and rotate it over, grab my upper torso, rotate it a little bit more. I can rotate my arm up, rotate my elbow. So you can see that we're starting to get a parenting hierarchy sorted out for our character. I'm just going to pause the video, jump ahead and complete the other side of the character so that everything is linked correctly. So I've finished the other side of the character now and we can rotate anything we want in the character. What we need to do now is make sure that we're going to be able to animate this character in the poses that we need to. So uh, we've, we're going to do some standard bipedal character animation with this guy. We're going to do some walks, runs, those sorts of things. So the first thing I like to do is make sure the legs are going to work the way I want them. And uh, I've got good rotation back and forward. What is a good method to test a rig is to come out to about 10, frame 10 on your timeline and switch on auto key. And the beauty of this is I can actually really put this character in some extreme poses and not have to keep hitting control Z to undo those poses. So what I'm doing now is just really testing and making sure that this character is going to be able to do what I want. In fact, because it's a, uh, robot and not uh, human with uh, with mesh with with skinning we can really get away with some pretty full-on poses and that one's looking pretty good and the reason why I've used the auto key is now all I need to do is select this keyframe here and delete it I can select the knee controller and delete that keyframe select the ankle delete that keyframe select the toe de delete that keyframe and I'm back to my starting pose. Now, that is saves a lot of headaches when you want to go back to a starting pose uh, without having to restart the file or go control Z about 50 times. So really test the rig out. What I'm going to do now is make sure that the hip controllers work. And the way the hip controllers are designed to work is it gives me independent hip control here without changing the torso up the top. And then I've got my lower torso rotation here, which is looking good. My upper torso rotation, that's working great. I've got my two, sh my shoulders. Rotate the elbow. I'll put this shoulder up a little higher. So really put the character through its paces. Double click on the base of any finger and make sure you're in local mode and you should be able to rotate organically with all of the fingers curling nicely. Cool. And then if you want to reset it back to normal, the easy way is to select all and then just go back to frame zero and delete all of the keyframes. And then you can switch auto key off and you're now back to standard pose so i've tested everything and this is by no means uh, the full extent of the testing that i've done i want you to really test the rig and make sure that you haven't left anything behind i just wanted to also show you what i've done in the manage layers my layer managers i've got two groups two layers with all of the finger joints for that left hand or left set of fingers and then I've got the right fingers. I've got all of my mesh. If I was to select everything in the mesh, in fact, this is that multiple gizmo. And I'm just going to switch that off by going into my customized preferences. Now that I don't need it anymore, just go allow multiple gizmos to switch that off. 
Uh, there are all my mesh objects there. And then I've got my mesh smooth toggle object, which is the square up here. And then I've got all my rig objects in the same group. Now, what this means is that I can select all, I can take all of my mesh objects and freeze them. And that way I can't even accidentally grab any mesh objects. I can only animate the animatable objects, which are the dummies and the controllers. I can easily take my rig objects and hide them if I want to do a, a render. I can take my rig objects, click select highlighted. I can right click, go into object properties and make sure that they're not renderable. So none of my controllers are actually renderable now, only the character itself. So if I just pull this into view here, only the character will actually render here and none of the controllers will actually render. So once again, it, stay, it, it pays to be organized, especially if you're going to hand this rig over to a character animator or somebody else in the pipeline. So we've tested the rig and now what we have to do is lock it down. We don't want to do any incorrect animation. We don't want the animator to break the rig by grabbing things that we don't want them to. And we do that by freezing and locking objects. Now I've already shown you how to freeze the mesh and notice that it's gray in the viewport. Well, that's a bit ugly and we don't want that so what we can do is just go mesh all select right click object properties and just untick show frozen in gray and that way we'll get full color in the viewport whilst the object is still frozen so everything that is animatable is now unfrozen and we can't accidentally grab any of the geometry we shouldn't be touching but we can lock it even further than that and a lot of it's got to do with the type of joints that we're dealing with notice here I can, a shoulder rotates up and down, it rotates forward and backwards, and it even to some degree pivots from the shoulder as well, which means it's, it's a true ball joint. And the elbow is very different to that. The elbow should never rotate like this, and it should also not rotate like this. Now you do get a little bit of forearm twist in a human being. This is a robot, so we don't have to worry about it. But in a human character, we do get some twist in the forearm and that's a different different process altogether. It's still a hinge joint that, that happens from the elbow though. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna hide this and show you how we're gonna lock these joints down. The shoulder can stay the way it is. However, what I wanna do is take every controller in the rig, and we can do that with our layer manager, just select our rig objects. And what I want to do is deselect the base controller, which is this one here. Actually, we will reselect that. So I've got every single controller in the character. I'm going to go into my link info button, which is in my hierarchy tab. So not in the control, not in the create tab, it's in the hierarchy tab. Click link info. And what you're looking at are the locks. And I want to lock the scale for everything that I've got selected there. Okay, so everything is scale locked. I can't accidentally scale my character, which can be devastating to a rig. So now I'm just going to alt and click on the ground. And I'm also going to alt and click on the center of gravity. And I'm going to tick all of the move locks. And the reason for that is everything is rotation uh, apart from those two. So now I'm just going to click a couple of specific ones. I'm going to click the center of gravity and it needs to have its rotation locked. It's very important that we don't rotate the center of gravity unless we absolutely need to and I don't want to accidentally do it. So I'm going to tick it off. But it is also important that we, we do have full range of movement on the center of gravity. Now, the hip rotators, which is this one here, it's fine, it can rotate forward, backwards, left, right, and a little bit of twist as well. So we're gonna leave that as is. Same too with the two spines. They're fine to rotate in every axis. We'll come down to the knees. The knees only need to rotate on the Z axis. Do the same for the other one. Keep coming down. We keep full rotation for the ankles but these toe rotators also Z axis only. Lock those up. The hips are fine, they need full rotation. 
shoulders full rotation, elbows just the Z. So now it can only rotate the way it's supposed to. And for the wrists, full rotation. Now with the fingers, what we do is all of the base joints, which are these four and the thumb base joint, we want to switch off the moves and the scales. In fact, we might as well grab everything in the hand and make sure scale is ticked for everything and move is ticked for everything. But for the base of each joint, lock X only. That means it can rotate, take for instance, this one here. I can rotate this way a little bit if I want to splay the fingers, spread the fingers apart, and it will also rotate this way. So it's just the base fingers that do that. We don't want these fingers to rotate left and right. So we want to make sure that we grab all of these. And it looks like I've already done it in a previous save. Ooh, ooh. I'm going to grab all of these and these as well. And make sure X and Z is locked in this instance and Y is unlocked. And that, that means that they will bend in the direction they're supposed to. Looks like the thumb is a little bit out of whack, but we can still work around. That's why the gizmo is good in the viewport. So for this one here, it looks like it should be the Z. And for this one also, it should be the Z that's left unlocked. And that way it can rotate in the direction it's designed to rotate in. The thumb is very unique. Make sure it has full rotation in all axes. So the elbow's looking pretty good. Shoulders are all looking good. The neck controller. What I want with the neck controller, I want it to be able to move back and forward and left and right, but I don't want it to rotate like this. So I'm going to take the Z rotation out of it. And the head, I do want to rotate in all directions. And we're looking pretty good. Okay, so there's our character now, and he's ready to go. He's ready to be animated. We've tested the rig completely. All we need to do now is hand it over to the animator or start animating. We've taken all of our joints. We've constrained them by locking any of the axes that don't need to be animated. They've all been hierarchically linked together correctly. We've frozen anything that doesn't need to be touched. And we've created a nice controller system that is going to allow us to pretty much create any animation we need for a simple robotic bipedal character. So that's going to do us for this tutorial. I really hope you grab the robot file and uh, work your way through it. And in preparation to, of our next tutorial, which is going to be a simple walk cycle, hopefully you'll be able to complete that walk cycle using your own rig. And that way, from start to finish, it's all going to be your own work. And I know you're going to get a lot of enjoyment and learn a lot out of this process. So give it a go. I hope you enjoy it. My name's Dave Scotland.